Welcome to the Sports Arena, your front row ticket to the best in sports talk and entertainment. Great analysis, top name guests, and news you can use from the sports landscape. So take your seats, sit back, and relax. As you, you are, are now in the Sports Arena. arena. You know what you're capable of. I like this kind of fire. Fix it. You bet you I want it. And here's your host, Eric Wilson. I'm like, all right, let's go. I get, we get losses. I'm like, I need a minute. Let <laughs> me collect myself. What's going on, everybody? Your man, Eric Wilson, Sports Arena here. And uh, can I just say many blessings to everybody out there? Happy New Year. This is going to be a great year for all of us, 2021. I have the privilege today of speaking to a, a man who is uh, very vested in the NBA in all facets. He's been around the league. He currently now is in a position to where he might be joining the G League. I know they're forming that whole bubble, what that's going to look like. But let me go ahead and introduce him and have him tell you his story. Let me welcome in Mr. CJ Carter. CJ, thank you so much for joining me on the Sports Arena, sir. How are you, sir? I'm doing fantastic, Eric. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So, I mean, let's just dive right into it. Let's get into it. Uh, talk to me about your journey, how you got started from, you know, humble beginnings to where you currently are right now. Uh, yeah, humble beginnings would definitely be the most accurate uh, of, of, of selection of words to use there. Uh, Eric, man, it's it's uh, you know just starting in a uh, inner city community, obviously, and uh, just working just working tirelessly at just trying to develop this love for a game that you know at times seemed insurmountable. Obviously, with all the different odds that you deal with, you right. know what I mean. And uh, just continuing to push, man. Work, 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 and uh, man, be fortunate enough to build some solid relationships along the way. And then that stuff just helps take you to another level. So, man, we went uh, from college, I mean, for, from high school into junior college because, you know, grades, you know, obviously are, are important. And sometimes coming from where I came from, it wasn't the focus, right? Exactly. And I'm so, right there with uh, you on that one. Exactly, man. And so I do junior college thing, but it worked out. We made some great relationships there. We won the national championship. And then obviously, man, we ended up going further, man, with Mississippi State. Then after that, uh, we went into our professional endeavors. Started with the Thunder at the time, uh, doing summer league there, and uh, ended up getting weighed by them going into preseason, and uh, that was the journey it began. In. <laughs> okay, so so talk to me about this journey. Talk to me about your time in the NBA. I see the New York, uh, the basketball sweatshirt that you got going on. Are the Knicks your team? Is that the team that you want to go play for, or is that? I mean, I listen. I know the typical response that everybody says to me is, man, I just want my shot. I just want my opportunity. But I like to dig a little deeper. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a Philly guy. So if I could ball like you, man, I'd be like 76ers. What's up? Like, come on. I'll take less money. Let me come play for y'all. That's my home. That. Yeah. So is is Nick basketball, is that what you grew up on watching? No. no. I mean, I'm a basketball lover in general as far as watching a game. You know what I mean? Right. Like a scientist with what I choose to do as far as how I approach watching it. You know what I mean? Um, and so more than anything, I found guys that I wanted to emulate or I admired their craft and I studied them. And then eventually, as I began to love the game more, I started watching certain teams because of the form of basketball they presented as a team concept. You know what I mean? And went from there. Uh, but no, man, uh, I think that actually got... I think this is a little old. I've had it probably about five, six years <laughs> from when I was okay. in New York. So it's, I mean, it's a little old, but uh, um, no, so whose style? Know. Whose style do you emulate? Whose game? Um, or uh, let's let's take player, and then let's take coach. So whose player do you kind of emulate your game towards after? Yeah, you're gonna always. Anytime someone sees me, you're always gonna get the, the typicals. You know, I play in the same positions as the Mikes and the Kobe's, the Kawhi Leonard's, you know what I mean? Uh, mid post, high post basketball, short quarter basketball, back to the basket initially. Probably operating that like six to eight foot window of okay. isolation space. Yeah. Uh, that's what, you know, that's what my calling card is. And I'm a guy with big hands, long arms, athletic. And so obviously anything, um, not, not, not that the three point line isn't my friend. But I really, really excel uh, anywhere between about 15 to about 20 feet. 
from the so you a short mid range jumper kind of guy. If they're gonna give yeah. you the space. You gonna you gonna just you gonna put it on. Absolutely. That's what that's what's going to happen. That's that's what that's what we work every day at. Just perfecting that. Not that there's not other aspects of my game. Uh, being 11 years in, that I don't do really well in, but that's what the money is. And, okay. Uh, we pride ourselves in that. So, what coaching style do you feel best would fit your style of ball? Yeah. Uh, I'm a I'm a big rah rah kind of guy, so uh, you know I love what Coach Pop does out there in San Antonio, just because he galvanizes the troops at a level that I would personally enjoy. Okay. Uh, and then, of course. I'm a big fan of you know uh, teams that run a triangle. And right now, the only team running the triangle in the league is the Clippers, mm -hmm. and so I'd love to be around Coach Lou and 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 everything that they have going on as well. So, and uh, that probably those probably be two just instantly that stick out to me personally. I got you. So, Mr. Carter, let me ask you: What at, we've all faced adversity in 2020, right? You know, with with the pandemic and and everything happening in the world, we all kind of had to take a step back and kind of reflect on who we are and kind of reinvent ourselves for 2021. So let me ask you, what have you done in 2020 to put you in the best position to be successful in 2021? I think one of the most important things I did personally, uh, going in to the new year, right. Uh, was just take the time to understand that there are no shortcuts, right. In anything yep. that we have going on, I think 2020, represented as a whole, especially in hindsight now, looking back at the year more than anything, was a chance to just kind of focus on the now more, be more okay. present, not to get so caught up in what's about to happen, and also not obviously reflect as much on what's happened, you know what I mean, from a future and past perspective, more than be present. And then present time, because of the fact that we were quarantined, the, the pandemic really starting to kind of go rampant throughout the world, uh, what you really started realizing is you had ample amount of time to just work on yourself. Mm -hmm. And 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 so in reality, that to me was, uh, you know, a gift and a curse, of course, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> exactly. we're used to being sociable people, but I thought it was a beautiful thing from an aspect of, uh, I love, I love work. I love the concept of work constantly, tireless work constantly, because what I'm excited about is the opportunity to become a new version of myself, the evolution of yourself, the maturation process, right? And so you get a chance to walk into a new year like, hey, listen, 2020 gave me a chance to really focus and grind myself into this sharpened product right. that I am now. As they say, like iron that. sharpens iron sharpens iron. And as I've learned a long time ago, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. That's exactly right. Exactly. Yeah. So let's talk about your connection with the CYM and the Undiscovered League. Let's talk about that. How did you, how did they find you? How did you find them? And how was that process? What was that process like? Um, the CYM League, uh, obviously creating young minds, that that league is phenomenal for the record. That I, I've been around basketball obviously my entire life, but just a place that doesn't want to exploit people for whatever gain more than just give these people young men or coaches or whoever, whomever an opportunity just to showcase their love for the game is a beautiful thing. You know what I mean? Yep. With no objectives behind, you know, behind the, the scenes or hidden, hidden agendas. And I think it's a beautiful thing, but I got in contact with Mathis Crowder. Uh, and uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't even remember it. I guess when I first came out here to Texas, I ran about 2011, 2012, we ran into each other at a basketball function at the time and uh you know i'm doing my pro grind and so some guys knew me obviously and so i was just you know in the basketball environment and they had a guy with them that looked like he had a lot of potential problems on him and uh i just shared some stuff with him just some information you know just trying to help in his process and uh apparently from what they were saying that was like man your words just always stuck you know what i mean wow. where you carried yourself and this that and the third so i'd say probably about three or four months ago I was in the gym, obviously, just sharpening, you know, getting my work in. I like to work. Exactly. And, uh, just so happened to run past Mathis again. He's like, CJ, what's going on? I'm like, hey, hey, how you doing? You know <laughs> what I mean? Didn't, didn't really remember him at the time, but he reminded me where he met me at and how we had kept running into each other. And he's like, the last time we saw each other, we were at the Mavericks facility. And this, that, and that. I'm like, oh, my goodness, I remember it, man. What's going on? How you been? You know, I instantly just called click. Oh, yeah. And so we stayed in contact. 
and he let me know what he was doing and said it would be an honor to have me come through and participate in what they were doing initially, man. And once I saw it, it was awesome because these guys were all hungry and just filled with that love of the game. And I was like, oh, no, let me, however I can help, let me know and we'll go from there. Yeah, and that's big. And the one thing that I have learned by watching, you know, Dr. Ackerman and Coach Crowder is just the involvement and just the genuine love of building up these young men as they come through this undiscovered league. Yeah, I'm so absolutely. thankful that I was able to just get on board and be a part of this because now it has opened up my world and kind of in the same regard as you were trying to help me just kind of reinvent myself. CJ, thank you so much for your time, man. I brother, I really appreciate it. Best of Anytime. luck. I'm gonna Anytime. I'm gonna give you the floor for about 30 seconds. I want the world to know where they can start following you because I want to see this journey evolve. I hope, you know, I, I I have a strong feeling that your number is gonna get called when it comes to what they do in the G League. And I can't wait to see you back in the NBA. So if you would do me a favor, please, I'm gonna cut myself out. Just give 30, 45 seconds. Let the people know where they can find you and follow you and watch this amazing journey. Yeah, I mean, sure. Um, um, I, I choose to kind of stay kind of selective, uh, narrow narrow myself down in my social media platform. So if you want, you can always contact me uh, through message or whatever the case may be uh, on Instagram. Uh, that my handle is at the CJ Carter, at the CJ Carter on Instagram and uh man I'm I'm always open I'm not, never one of those guys to shy away from communicate with anyone so you got something you want to ask or comment or a suggestion or a criticism I'm o I'm open to it all so I appreciate it man thank you so much for joining me today here on the sports arena ladies and gentlemen this is Mr. CJ Carter this man from humble beginnings to where he is right now about to be back in the NBA whether it be in the G League or actually back on that main court right. I'm excited to see what this brother can do Many blessings, man. Happy New Year to you. I look forward to talking to you really soon. I appreciate it, Eric. Thanks, man. You guys have a great Thank you. That's going to do it for you, man, Eric Wilson. Hey, happy New Year, everybody. 2021, let's get that grind. I'm going to talk to you guys soon. Have a great day.